General Biology Practical and Field Work, Bio 108. Exercise 1, University Campus Biodiversity Audit. Welcome to the University Campus Biodiversity Audit. This activity is designed to help you explore the rich diversity of living organisms that exist right within your university environment. You'll be identifying different species of plants and animals, understanding their ecological roles, and discovering how they interact within the same space. The audit not only teaches you basic ecological methods but also helps you develop observation, teamwork, and analytical skills. In this video, we'll guide you step-by-step -step on how to carry out a proper biodiversity audit safely and accurately. Step 1. Wait for specific instructions. Before anything else, wait patiently for specific instructions from your lecturer or the field coordinator. You will be assigned a particular area within the campus, such as a garden, wetland, sports field, or wooded zone, for your class to audit. The lecturer will also specify the sampling methods you are to use and the kind of data expected. Don't rush ahead without clarification. The goal is to follow standard ecological procedures, so make sure you understand what to observe, how to collect data, and how to stay safe while in the field. Step 2. Group Safety and Teamwork Always remember that biodiversity audits are group activities, not solo adventures. Join the group that has been officially assigned to your class. Work closely with your teammates and avoid isolating yourself for any reason. Field safety is very important so stay in open areas, avoid dense bushes, and remain visible to others. Appoint one person to serve as a safety monitor who keeps track of everyone's location. Carry essentials like water, hats, insect repellent, and closed shoes. Respect campus wildlife, do not chase or harm any animals. Your personal safety and environmental responsibility come first. Step 3. Conducting the audit. Once you receive your location and instructions, it's time to start your campus biodiversity audit. Use standard ecological techniques such as the transect method, where you walk along a straight line and record species found at intervals, or the point count method, where you stand at specific spots and record organisms you can see or hear. Observe and identify both plant and animal species, those on the ground, on tree trunks, in bushes, and even flying above like birds or butterflies. Note every organism you find. You can use field guides, mobile apps, or photos to identify them later. The key here is accurate observation. Step 4. Field Recording During your field survey, record observations quickly and without worrying about neatness. Use your notebook to jot down whatever species or features you see, plants, birds, insects, mammals, or fungi. Record their location, estimated number, and notable features such as leaf type, color, or behavior. These raw notes will later be organized into proper tables. For now, focus on covering as much ground as possible. Remember to use short forms or symbols to save time, and take photos if allowed. The idea is to collect enough data that reflects the true biodiversity of your study area. Step 5. Organizing field data into tables. After the fieldwork, it's time to organize your findings neatly. Create a table with clear columns such as Name of organism, whether plant or animal, frequency, how many times it was observed, and percentage occurrence, which is the frequency divided by total observations, multiplied by 100. Ensure to include at least 10 different organisms in your table for proper analysis. You may notice that some species are very common while others appear rarely. This is normal and shows natural variation in distribution. This table will become the foundation for your graphs and later interpretations. Step 6. Constructing a histogram. Using your organized data, the next step is to construct a histogram. The histogram will visually display how frequently each organism appeared during your audit. Place the names of organisms on the x-axis and the frequency of observation on the y-axis. Each bar represents one species, and the height of the bar shows how common it was in your sample area. This makes it easy to see which organisms dominate your ecosystem and which are rare. Histograms provide a clear visual summary that helps in comparing biodiversity levels across different habitats within the campus. Step 7. Classifying Organisms by Ecological Role 
Now that your data is organized, classify each organism based on its ecological role in the ecosystem. Identify producers such as grasses, shrubs, and trees that make their own food through photosynthesis. Then list primary consumers, such as insects or herbivorous birds, that feed directly on plants. Next, identify secondary consumers, like lizards or carnivorous birds, that feed on other animals. Don't forget decomposers, such as fungi or bacteria, which help recycle nutrients by breaking down dead materials. This classification helps you understand how energy flows through the campus ecosystem. Step 8. Drawing a Food Chain Using your ecological classifications, draw a food chain that represents how energy passes from one organism to another. A simple example might be, grass grasshopper lizard hawk. Each arrow in the chain represents the direction of energy flow. Try to use real organisms that you actually observed during your audit. The food chain helps you visualize the interdependence among organisms and the role each one plays in maintaining balance in the ecosystem. Step 9. Constructing a food web. Finally, combine all your food chains to form a food web. A food web gives a more realistic picture of your ecosystem because it shows how multiple species are interconnected through various feeding relationships. For example, a single bird species may feed on insects, fruits, and seeds, linking it to many chains at once. Constructing the food web helps reveal the complexity and stability of biodiversity on your campus. The richer the web, the healthier the ecosystem. Step 10. Report Preparation and Submission once you've drawn your food web, prepare your final report. Include the title, study location, date, methodology used, and your organized tables, histogram, and illustrations. Discuss your findings, such as which species were most common, which were rare, and possible reasons for these patterns. Finally, include your food chain and food web diagrams. Make your report clear, accurate, and visually neat. Submit it as directed by your lecturer. This will serve as your record of the biodiversity status of your university campus. Conclusion Congratulations! You've now completed the campus biodiversity audit. This exercise helps you understand the variety of living organisms around you, their ecological importance, and the fragile balance that sustains ecosystems. Remember, biodiversity is not limited to forests or national parks. It exists in our immediate environments, including campuses. Protecting biodiversity begins with awareness and appreciation. So continue to observe, learn, and take action to conserve the life around you.